Okay. Sure. All right. What do you, Pallavi? Uh, just request for everybody to keep your mics on mute when the speaker is speaking and unmute yourself uh, when it's your turn. Thank you so much. Dale Carnegie once said, as long as we have hope, we have direction, the energy to move and the map to move by. It is with this hope that I wish all of you a very happy new year and welcome you to this first of its kind orientation program for the DM Harish School of Law for their three year LLB and five years integrated law courses. To begin the program, I welcome our principal, Dr. Neha Jaktiani, for the welcome address. A known name in Mumbai Academia and a PhD from SNDT University. She is also a member of Indian Merchants Chambers Education Committee, a gold medalist from the University of Mumbai. She is an avid researcher who has chaired various conferences and presented numerous research papers at national and international platforms and has also written for global publications. She is also a published author with three books to her credit, with one of her books published with a reputed German publishing house and another one launched at the hands of the renowned ad guru Piyush Pandey. Having been a member of the board of studies, she presently serves with the top educators as advisory to the government of Maharashtra for the national education policy. Dr. Jaktiani's contribution to the academia and the society as at large has not gone unrecognized. She has been awarded the Best Citizen of India Award by the International Publishing House and has also been a part of the prestigious educators delegation to both universities in the UK and Australia. She has been conferred with the COVID-19 Game Changer Award for Innovative Spirit, Leadership and Positive Contribution to Humanity by the Sindhi Chamber of Commerce and has been felicitated by the Honorable Governor of Maharashtra, Shri Bhagat Singh Koshiyariji, for being a COVID warrior. Recently, she has also received National Talent Search Award 2021 for her valuable contribution in empowering education by the Indian Accounting Association. Without any further ado, I request Dr. Neha Jaktiani to deliver the welcome address. Thank, Thank you so much, Patavi, for that very, very generous introduction. Life is a trip, only it doesn't come with a map. You have to find your own rules to reach your destination. Good evening and a very, very warm welcome to the orientation for DM Hari School of Law, HSNC University's DM Hari School of Law. It's my absolute honor and privilege to welcome this wonderful August gathering to this very, very pertinent orientation. I'd like to begin today with a small real life anecdote that I have read. And it's, it's not, it's a small little anecdote, real life story, but nothing to do with law. It's just about the power of speaking. Uh, there was a young worker working in a factory and it was a cold storage factory. And there were more than 1,000, 2,000 workers working every day. But this young worker would come every morning and to the security, wish him good morning, have a nice day. And at the end of his day's work, he would go back and he would tell the, uh, while going out, he would tell him, thank you, good night, and have a good night. One day it so happened that this worker landed late to office, to the factory. And he had a lot of pending work, which was to be completed. And it so happened that... Uh, he got so engrossed that he didn't realize that everybody had already left and he was still packing the store material. And he was working near the deep freeze section where he was packing all this material and oblivious to everybody leaving and the time being over, he wanted to finish his day's quota. And outside, everybody had left. The main warehouse in charge took a cursory glance of outside, everybody left, locked the factory door and went home. And this worker suddenly realized that he's stuck in the deep freeze section where there's no network, no mobile phone working, and he's stuck there for the whole night. And the deep freeze section temperature goes right up to minus 24 degrees. That's how the temperature is set. He realized that slowly it's stuck. 
and become older, he's not going to survive and he's going to lose his life because nobody can survive in such a degree of temperature. And he thought that his end moment has come. Suddenly from somewhere, the security guard outside realized that in these 1,000, 2,000 workers which went, today morning, he heard a good morning, have a nice day, but he didn't hear, have good night and the good night. So he wondered where this worker had gone. He opened the tree, went inside to the tree section and found him playing with and immediately rescued and brought him outside. The story is, no matter how big you are, how much in stature you are, your little act of being polite, of talking to the lowest of the lower, will never go unnoticed because good words and good treating everybody with politeness and courtesy will always in this case it's night every day saved his life so uh, it's my absolute absolute honor and privilege to welcome you for this very very pertinent orientation program for hsnc university's dm hari school of law Believe me, this is going to be your ticket to a great career. Law is something which is all encompassing. Whether it's the BCOMs, whether it's the BMS, whether it's the BAF, whatever field you are in, everybody needs to study law. The legal framework of the country should be known to everybody. And today law has a huge market and it has huge scope and there's a lot that you can do. Even the five-year integrated program post-standard 12th, which you will see in the small little video that we have prepared, has a huge amount of prospects. So it's my absolute honor and privilege to welcome our chief guest for today, Mr. Nishit Desai. He is an eminent legal luminary with a huge, uh, vast experience. And uh, yesterday when I was talking to him, he was just telling me about how he shares a history with Bandra that 40 years ago, there was a store that he used to run, which was very close to Ali National College. So, sir, a very, very warm welcome to you. And thank you for agreeing to be the chief guest for today. A very, very warm welcome to our personal favorite, past president and trustee, absolute top-notch legal expert, advocate Sri Anil Harish, sir. Anil Harish, sir, has a you know, it's very difficult to decide whether he's a better lawyer or he's a better human being. Armed with his charming smile, he's always been saying that he has spent more time in colleges as a trustee than he ever did as a student. So a very, very warm welcome to you, sir. And thank you so much for agreeing to be the keynote speaker for this very pertinent webinar. A very, very warm welcome to Vice Chancellor of HSNC University, and the woman who wears so many hats from principal of KC College to dean, former dean, faculty of science, and managing the management studies college, Dr. Hemlata Bagla, a personal friend and a mentor. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being here and uh, being part of this endeavor and always shining high and being the torch bearer of the HSNC University. A very, very warm welcome to all the faculty who have joined and of course, the most important, the blood in our veins, the reason we are here, and that is our students. Today, you are going to, it's going to be a turning point because what you're going to learn, all your questions will be answered. Everything that you want to know about this DM Hari School of Law will be answered here. I can promise you, this is your one-stop destination. This is your ticket for a very, very bright future. So warm welcome to all the students. And of course, I'd like to thank my team who can do everything. Technical support, Vipul Saluja, Kisha Kukreja, the welcome in the end, the best wishes video, Meghna Kutari, our lovely host, Pallavi. And of course, all of them, Krupa who's worked on the QA, Praveen who's worked on the registration, Ms. Lakshmi Ayer, I can't take all names, but everybody who's put this together. A thank you and a very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you who joined us today. 
I'm sure it's going to be a very enlightening session. And I conclude with the famous words of the Olympic gold medalist who says, dreams require effortless sleep, whereas aims require sleepless efforts. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, ma'am, for those inspiring words. We are indeed motivated and for such a warm welcome. Let's now take a look at the introductory video DM Harish School of Law.
don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, "I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built." No, you don't start there. You say, "I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid." You do that every single day, and soon you have a wall. The key point to success is to take the first step. When you look up how big the task is, the task is never huge. It's always a dream. Before you go ahead, Pallavi, a uh, wonderful presentation, and uh, I'm a professor, so sometimes I'm absent-minded. Please forgive me. I have forgotten to welcome Dr. C. V. Ashra, Director, D. M. Hari School of Law. A warm welcome, sir. Thank you, Pallavi. You can carry on. May I now request the Vice Chancellor of the H. S. N. C. University, Dr. Hem Lata Bagla, an illustrious academician. and administered to test the virtual gathering having served as the principal of kc college she is an educationist and a researcher specializing in nuclear and radio chemistry and a believer of lifelong learning over to you ma'am thank you very much pallavi first of all on behalf of hsnc university i thank the team of ardi national college led by dr neha jagtiani dr lakshmi ayer ayer and all the members who are who have made this particular program happen for dm high school of law thank you dr neha for that wonderful effort indeed appreciate it let me begin with uh, new year greetings to all of you and a prayer and a wish that may your year be filled with peace prosperity and love god's blessings bestow upon each one of you for a bright healthy and a peaceful new year and life too so thank you for a warm welcome neha and i once again express my thanks to each one of you for being part of this program and it's indeed a pleasure that we have with us mr nishad desai ji father of international law our chief guest for today who is present amit sas is indeed always a pleasure to have mr anil harish our trustee and former president of hsnc board which runs more than 24 institutions and now one university too dr neha jagtiani principal of ard national college vice principal dr lakshmi ayer the leaders of dm harish school of law dr atra director of school of law and dr kavita lal chandani dm high school of law dean of law we have to our dr balani who has joined this program the entire team of hsnc entire faculty members of dm high school of law and all future students of dm high school of law i'm sure you will be part of us very soon part of this program a uh, warm good evening to each one of you it's pleasure to be part of this program which is organized by national year and the first program for dm hari school of law and when you begin well and begin on a wonderful note i think it's going to go very well 
Dear friends, almost all the legal, social, political thinkers say that rule of law is the foundation of human rights. Indeed, we can't imagine our free life in this modern world without the regulations, without the order, and which is only possible because of the rule of law. Whether we are people who belong to Republic of India or across the globe, we are bound to live and act according to the law. And so there has always been people who take law seriously by professionally. Dear friends, law denotes different victorious institution for the creation of the new generation of the minute I say new generation, and we have Mr. Desaiji here about industry 4.0 and education 4.0. Who else could be the but the Mr. Nishad De Desai having the technology background? I believe with his presence, with his words, you'll be all the more very clear about lawyers with the backdrop, with the backing, with the skill set of technology, and here is the place where you have to be. The modern age of law is not only about legality, friends, but also it's about its application in different domains. The DM Harish School of Law will help each one of you. If you want to be professionals, then you will help to learn to explore almost every facet of law, which is applicable in diverse fields, such as healthcare, technology, environment, human rights, entertainment is also part of it, international affairs, space, as well as cyber security. At DM High School of Law, learners like you will get an opportunity to put experiments into benchmark in legal world. And you will learn to endure economic, or whether it is social, political, and judicial inquiry. Keeping in mind the same, we currently are offering three major programs, as you saw in the presentation, to all the aspirants who want to be part of this institution. We are offering two five years integrated programs, BLLB and BBA LLB honors. Also, along with three years and program. All these three programs, as you saw, the advisory board, which consists of Anil Harish, sir, we have with us uh, even the the Dean of Law, Dr. Kavita Lalchandani, the Honorable Justice of Bombay High Courts, academic experts, industry experts, each one of them have contributed to the curricula. And this entire three, all these three programs have been structured strategically to ensure that those students who are aspirants, who are part of this school, will have an access to diverse range of fields and to broaden their legal outlook. Friends, the role of a lawyer in today's times has completely evolved. And what we have learned that it has moved many moons away from the black robes and white collars to corporate offices, to job movies, in media, whichever area, whichever domain you are interested in, whether in dance, in music, in sciences, in commerce, in management studies, in whichever subject you expertise I want to have expertise in. The law has permeated in each and every field. But as a profession, it means lots more and uh, more. It encompasses various fields like litigation, media, intellectual properties, academics. At the same time, law opens up practice, which was again shown in the, in the presentation, is about civil law, constitutional law, family law, corporate law, and many more. Friends, irrespective of whichever practice area one might select, one thing that is constant. The lawyer to population ratio today is very less. And according to the figures given by the Bar Council of India, there is just one lawyer for every 1,800 people. It is apposite to mention that there is a huge imbalance in the ratio of demand and supply. Therefore, a student who graduates as a lawyer has to meet this demand aptly by possessing a comprehensive and a deep insight 
on the ins and outs of the various laws in India or at the global front. They say, if you do not periodically change the water, it will almost certainly turn into a pool without its portability or losing its portability. Similarly, be it a law student or a lawyer or medical practitioner or anyone, one has to be constantly updated about the current statutes or current things, current advancements. So as a lawyer, I would say that one has to be constantly updated about the current statutes and current affairs. The recent statutes are enacted by government to lighten the burden on the judiciary. So with such recent enactments, there are countless opportunities for the young lawyers like you, but only those of you with have, which, who have better understanding of the law and who are able to grab the opportunities. And hence, some students ask me, why a new school? The board already has three schools. And the reason, updation of knowledge, an opportunity for students to expertise in every front, every area they want to, as I mentioned, technology, or you're from social sciences, you're from sciences, teaching you diverse backgrounds. There's a reason that law as a subject has to be integrated, has to be stitched right after you have passed 12 or after your graduation. So that's a reason it requires a new curricula and Mr. Anil Harish being the trustee of the board, being the immediate former president, or I would say a person who is also an advisory board realized that the curricula, the new curricula has to have been from professionals, academic uh, boards, and it has to be having that uh, integral part of our uh, sets, which is like, that's the reason we have mood codes. And also it should incorporate uh, the social outreach component as a part of curricula, so that the learners learn values of social commitment, entrepreneurship, and responsible behavior. If all has to be in one, then it required a new school to be established. Five years program, which is BLLB or BBLLB honors, was thought of, and the school, GM High School of Law, took his first page that day. So, my friends who are listening today, who are part of this program, the courses which I imparted at GM High School of Law, considers and covers, as I mentioned, all the important aspects of law and also whether it is theoretical point of view or as a practical point of view. As I again mentioned that we want to, uh, the students to see mood code competitions, not when they are appearing or they are, they are learning LLB program after their graduation, right after 12, the very first year of undergrad degree, imagining yourself in mood code and even various activities that will hone and polish uh, advocacy skills. So that is a pledge we have taken that we need to see that develop at very young age those advocacy skills. I'm very glad that we have guest Mr. Nishit Desai and our keynote speaker who will throw more light. But at the end, I would say that, let me assure you on behalf of HSNC University that all of you will get the best resources for your growth as a successful lawyer. My best wishes with each one of you Looking forward, part of your future endeavor. Looking forward, you being part of us very soon. And wherever you go and whatever you do, our wishes will always be with you. So wishes on behalf of all of us here. And once again, I thank uh, Mr. Anil Harish and Mr. Nishit Desai for gracing this orientation program and being ready to enlighten our students. Once again, I thank team at Ascent University and above all, team RD National College, the entire team for being this institution of our HSNC board and organizing this program. Thank you very much. And once again, a very to all of you. Ma'am, for that valuable information and your kind words. It is right that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Our chief guest today, Mr. Nishit Desai, founder Nishit Desai Associates, a renowned lawyer, definitely lives up to this adage. 
with a team of bright young lawyers mr desai combines a multidisciplinary practice with research and development he is well known globally and is a safe pair of hands for many foreign law firms his was the first indian firm to establish a presence in the and it has maintained a dominant presence for indian work in that market sir it is truly a privilege to have you with us today may i now request you to address the gathering so neha ben as we say in guju style uh hamlata ben achira ben of course uh, kavita and of course honorable registrar of the university and my dear friend anil what a wonderful uh occasion to be in the middle of i think I, this shows that there is a women power here and uh, i'm so happy the all of your thing lead to have a next generation of uh, i would say lawyers okay you're playing a role i must compliment you all there are two things which make me very happy one i've been a neighbor of the school uh, you know and uh, i was working in a small medical store on waterfield road my uncle had it and we are a family store so i used to sell medicine across the tables from 1965 to 1973 when i did my law so i'm now in practice for 47 years okay and um, we used to come and have i think belpuri stuff like that in the surrounding areas of your college and it was wonderful experience number one second i continue to remain a student every single morning in our law firm we have a continuing education program and i have sit in the classroom just like any one of you so when i'm talking to you today I'm talking necessarily as a lawyer or you know a professional i'm also talking and sharing my experiences that i have gone through uh my grandfather was a lawyer in gujarat of course i had to start everything on my own in mumbai but what thing about lawyering is just not about money it's not economics it's not about doing this or that but i think most important thing we are in the profession not in the business of law and do you know what is the difference between profession and business in business money comes first and service comes next number 2 in profession i think service comes first and of course it comes even if it doesn't come it gives you a lot of job job satisfaction second somebody would ask me what is another difference between a profession and a business profession okay in profession you have binding code of conduct that there are certain things that you do and certain things you don't do but there is a binding code of conduct so again a question is raised whether mba or a business or it is not a profession the dean of harvard business school nitin nehoria and other authors actually whole issue came up is mba profession and there can this business school so called right and there's a mba is not a profession because the code of conduct and therefore many a times people go into mba to make money you know and a um, lot of distortions have happened on wall street or you know other places and whatever i'm not getting into judgmental issues i'm not against saying but it is yet not considered as a profession okay so this is just a small little difference that you might want to bear in mind that you want to you know have a conduct which is helpful to the society helpful to your clients helpful to other people as well okay and there is some binding code of conduct for example if we cannot engage ourselves in so called business activities when we are in the profession you can't be partner of a uh, business you cannot do x y z things and stuff like that there is some code of conduct and um, uh, that is what differentiates us from the other thing 
But at the same time, the beauty about legal profession is that, you know, whether somebody gives you a job or not, you can still be well occupied. And anywhere you go, you can contribute a cent worth. You know, whether you go and go into commercial law and advise big global corporations, you may go in a small little town and help some poor fellow who is not getting justice. You can go to social institution, you can go into uh, any other activity, I think law will really help you. And therefore, you can always find work for yourself, always get gainfully engaged, just like many of you have done, you're in the teaching profession. I think it's, it's, it's very satisfying in many ways. So the opportunities are a galore and you don't have to be dependent on somebody employing you. And that legal profession allows you to do that, you know. Uh, what I would think is that, you know, you come to the profession of law, okay, to use law as a tool for changing the world for the better. Try to see that you have this tool which allows you to change things in a way that nobody can imagine. How creatively you can use law. You get a lot of scope for innovation and creativity. Most of the people think that it's only in the technology space, but law can give you a, a great tool to change the world for the better together. You know, just like some of you know that Supreme Court old cars, you know, pollution was happening and they said right to life and liberty. Okay, if you incorporate that, you can say, okay, dismantle all these old engines and don't use the, you know, CNG stuff and whatnot. I don't want to go into details of that. But there are many ways in which the courts have interpreted law, which is not so specifically written, but have changed the world. And I think the lawyers who contributed must be complimented for that, you know. And uh, because as you said in the legal profession, that counsel is as good as his brief and the judge is as good as the counsel is. So counsel's job is to educate judges and judges then can, uh, you know, um, change the world by delivering judgments that will have large impact on the society. So I think this is one part. Second part, just to share some of my experiences personally. Okay. One that, of course, I did my law in 1973. And uh, that was the time when I think India was very insular. It was very introward looking kind of thing, an uh, inward looking country. And, um, you know, we had to play a role in uh, opening up the economy. Okay. And um, um, and I, when I was studying, in fact, we had first thing there was onslaught on the constitutional rights. Emergency came in 1977. So as lawyers, we had the opportunity to participate in changing those kind of things uh, and uh, fight against emergency. And, uh, uh, you know, at least we could see that, um, uh, you know, uh, the citizens are protected from this onslaught of you know, uh, on sort of the uh, kind of uh, laws that I mean at that point of time, taking away liberties and stuff like that. So you have a role to play not only within the profession, but in the society. And I think that is, I personally think is the most important thing that we need to bear in mind. But at the same time, um, for me personally, uh, you know, philosophy has become very important. And law is nothing else but in many ways a philosophy. So when you see everything, when you look at a law, there's a there's a law. If you violate law, okay, you have penalties. But immediately there is a philosophy that okay, penalties and prosecution should be proportionate to the crime committed. In India today, sometimes I wonder, you know, that we have so many rules and regulations, laws and stuff like that. But everything is becoming, you know, uh, every civil office 
getting criminal offense, becoming being treated as a criminal offense. Penalties and prosecutions are disproportionate to the crime committed. For every small thing, there is a jail, there is penalties and hefty penalties. I think we need to change that as well. So as students, you have both the opportunity because you have no vested interest. So you can speak more freely than even a lawyer can, right? And um, change the things around you. Those days we had emergency and then we had other kind of stuff. And um, uh, I did my LLM in 1977, okay, with international business and international law. And um, um, over a period of time, you know, lately in 1990, I set up law firm. When I looked at the whole ecosystem around the world, most of the law firms had 100 year history. Now, for me, should I set up a law firm? And if I set up a law firm, what difference I can make? All the law firms which are 100 years, they can look back with pride, very good job. We must say, Stalwarts and the other um, founders of the law firms. But I had, you know, a fresh in many ways as far as the law firm is concerned. And I thought one way to look at the world is to look to the past 100 years, excellent, you can look back with pride, but I don't have history, so let me look to the future. And the philosophy came up that every new technology, every new business model, every new social, political, or economic change or development brings along with it a new strategic legal, tax, or legal issues. So I thought that let me look to the future 100 years rather than the past and see what new technologies will be coming and what will be the future legal issues, tax issues, and stuff like that. You, you have an opportunity to shape the future. Okay. As Professor Yunus, Nobel Prize winner, always says that you shape the future that you want. You shape the world that you want. So law provides you a great opportunity to shape the future. So what we typically do today, and I'm again a researcher, so almost 40% of our time we spend on research, academics, thought leadership, and stuff like that, and try to gaze into the future. A little fuzzy logic, of course, that these new technologies are coming, and these are the likely strategic legal tax or ethical issues that will be coming up. And we write a lot of papers. Some of you might want it and you'll find you know, a lot of papers. So, for example, about 10 years ago, in, uh, I would say not 2012, 13, we looked at blockchain and crypto. Now, at that point of time, crypto, when you talk about crypto, somebody will think it's only for money laundering, drugs, and stuff like that. But blockchain is so interlinked with crypto, you know, you've got to take the whole ecosystem together. We specialized on that. It took seven years. But suddenly, crypto has become the talk of the town today. Then we specialized on autonomous vehicle, driverless car. Okay, and we looked at um, uh, what will be the issues if accident happened. This was one paper we published sometime around 2016 or 17, June, June, uh, month of June. And we created a simulated model, just as you're doing moot court, simulated model, if Tesla meets with an accident, what would happen? Tesla will say, is it my responsibility? They will say, no, it was software that went in. There were sensors. So it was sensor manufacturer's fault. Then somebody will say, it is a software provider's fault. Insurance companies will say, we are not responsible. Tesla says that, no, we have always warned you that don't sleep while the car is on. And, you know, even though it is automatic, it's, you know, autonomous. If nobody drives it, it drives itself. But don't lift your hand from the, you know. So what happened in that case, some of you already know that the car mixed up between a white cloud and a truck going in front of it. And it thought it was a cloud. So it went in the ramped in and the driver died. So everybody took the same position, which we, this was sometime on in June 16, or I don't remember the exact date. The simulated model, we had quite a few people attending that. And next day, this accident happened. Everyone took the same position, you know, that was a very interesting part of it. Then we specialize um, energy and uh, eco uh, the battery, 
now the new because now you see so much is happening on the new energy modules then we specialize iot then ar vr 3d printing because 3d printing is going to bring so many new ip issues somebody can manufacture gun at home and somebody can manufacture the part that you make okay so there are a lot of ip issues liability issues and stuff like that then we have um, specialized on as i mentioned um now designer babies as well because 10 12 years since designer babies will come so you can triangular face you can have own face and uh, uh, should the law put a limit on that or you should allow the freedom to have the shape of the baby that you want this some for some people it will be scary but some it will be fun but somewhere we'll have to draw a line where do we draw a limit to that another interesting specialization is ai and robotics whether robots conferred a separate personality like a company because when robots today is fed with all the information it acts on that over a period of time it will collect more information and decide on its own what to do okay so then you have no control over a robot so when you no know control over a robot and it acts on its own what would happen you know uh, would you say i am responsible or the robot itself is responsible so just like you have theory of a company the company is a separate entity it is an artificial entity and you say once a company works within a particular framework you can disown its liability you can only be liable up to the shares that you invested in okay similarly in robotics also similar situation would come and there are already talks about conferring a separate personality on a robot now what are the consequences of that so a lot of opportunities of that kind new protein new food like vegetarian meat and stuff like that is a new area of uh, work that is going on you know so what i'm trying to tell is that look to both of course the past present but of course to the future and you have a lot of understanding more than about i would understand about technology here you, you, you can a lot of niches in the whole thing and again i'm talking about futuristic thing but even in the present world a lot of things that you can do i'm apart from the traditional laws you know um shipping or aircraft or other kind of stuff but you know these are areas where you can uh, uh, focus on but my advice to you will be do not begin to specialize from day one don't siloed that i want to do only this and i want to do only that you are at a juncture where you have to decide whether to join the profession of law or the, to study law or not you know this is the time where you have to think philosophically why do you want to join my advice to you would be you know you want to change the world for the better together using law as a tool. you want to serve the society do not just getting because you see somebody is making a lot of money do not get in just because you know uh, somebody tells you with a heart you know you get in have passion and try to see what best you can do for the world around you because you live not for yourself you live for many other people who contribute to your life i think these are few things one approach that is um, what we recommend people that as you move forward then you specialize fine but it should be inverted t model inverted t means you have one or two specialized areas of practice but you must have general understanding on a horizontal side of other subjects okay and that will give you a better perspective on finding solutions to your problems that you, because you have to have deeper knowledge on one or two or three things but you cannot be so oblivious that you do not know other things number 2 that outside as well today no longer you can think just as a lawyer right you have to think beyond and you have to understand apart from technology a little bit about business apart from uh, that human rights very important lot is written on the subject of business and human rights now in the european region i think this is one area which i would think very strongly uh, you know uh, about and um, understand the nuances 
because today what has happened, human rights and businesses are considered antithesis. Actually, we have turned this into a thesis that both are more complementary and create more value than they are at a conflict with each other. So if you want to create value in business or anything else, you know, even um, in the house or in the domestic uh, uh, scenario or otherwise, I think human rights are a very important part of, uh, you know, today's uh, life and Think of those kind of things. So think philosophically, you will find a lot of excitement, a lot of interesting situations, you will have a lot, of, lot to contribute. And of course, economics will take its own course. Do not get into the profession just because if somebody made a lot of money, and that is where I get in, you'll be disappointed. It will be miserable. It's very important that you put purpose before profit. Profit will follow. I'm almost guaranteeing that it would happen if you go it right way. Anytime, any help you need, we are all there to help you. And I, I, I think I've gone too long on my conversation, but uh, as you can see that uh, I started, uh, you know, over a period of 30, 40 years, uh, Anil Bhai has been a good friend of mine. And um, uh, even the research and academics, we have, we have become a quasi-university. You can see my campus uh, on the back of myself, a uh, uh, little photograph. Uh, I would love for you all to come and see some point in time. So where we just do only thinking and ideating for the future tech and um, share our ideas and uh, think and change the world for the better. I think these are a few things that I thought I'll share with you. Um, very much open to any question and um, wish you all the best and bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your guidance, your valuable advice, and for shedding light on the innovative specializations in the field of law. One of the important maxims of life is to your life with experiences, not things. Have stories to tell, not stuff to show. We have the privilege to have amongst us today advocate Sri Anil Harish immediate past president and trustee of the HSNC board, an eminent legal luminary. His practice includes many diverse areas, include property, exchange control, foreign investment, trusts, bills, and Indian and international taxation. He has been on the managing committee of Indian Merchants Chamber, Chamber of Tax Consultants, and the ITA Bar Association. And of office bearer of several institutions in the legal field as well. Mr. Harish has been ranked by prestigious legal directory of chambers and partners as a leading tax lawyer. He is a much sought after speaker in India and abroad and has given several professional speeches at events such as the Indian Calling Summit in Brussels, Belgium, 2009. He has also audiences in London, Dubai, Doha, Muscat, and Jakarta on several occasions, topics such as the FEMA, taxation, collaborations, etc. And many seminars in India and is a regular speaker on the annual budget. Sir, what a privilege it is to have you with us. May I request you for the keynote address? Thank you. Mr. Nishit Desai, Dr. Himlata Bagla, Dr. Neha Jaktiani and friends. One of the best known scenes in English literature is about the law. In Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice, Portia makes a very fine distinction between a pound of flesh on the one hand and a pound of flesh, blood and everything else that goes with it on the other. So the law can be very dramatic. We see many TV programs, Boston Legal Suits and many others, which show what are the things that go into the of law. But of course, law is much more than drama. It is about life, about the daily events and the personalities in our lives. Every day you enter into contracts, which are based and on and governed by the Indian Contract Act 1872. You buy something physically or over the net, then there are consumer protection laws. You have to be conscious about maintaining peace and respecting others and their belongings violation of which can have consequences under the criminal law. 
There are traffic regulations, tax and fiscal laws, laws relating to the construction of your homes and so, so many more. Even your education is subject to the laws, the Maharashtra Universities Act, the University Grants Commission Act, etc. So the law is all around us. Every aspect of life is so important. Science and technology, business, medicine, computer, marketing, advertising, finance, shipping, engineering, etc. But so is the law. Ultimately, it comes down to what suits you best. As Polonia said in Shakespeare's Ham Hamlet, to thine own self be true. So if you have an interest in the law, you must consider this as a possible profession. The law is very interesting and very challenging. Academically and intellectually, the jurisprudential aspects are fascinating. Why do we have the law at all? What is the origin of the law? Thomas Hobbes in Leviathan said that life without the law would be solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. And that it was necessary to have the law to curb our own instincts because we all have these instincts of being difficult with other people. And therefore we need this power over us. Or is law a social contract, as Jean-Jacques Rousseau said? Well, whatever be the origin and whatever be the reasons, the fact is that we have many laws. And in fact, Cicero, the Roman lawyer and philosopher said, we are the slaves of the law so that we may be free. Then there is the implementation of the law. How do we apply statutes and judgments to our lives? And how do we interpret these laws? Today, the practice of law has grown much beyond the traditional civil and criminal practices of the past. There is so much specialization in IPR, that is intellectual property rights, corporate laws, mergers and acquisitions, the tax and fiscal laws, and many more niche areas. Each of these can be critical to us. And in-depth knowledge is essential to be able to comply with the laws and yet to be able to survive. Did you know, for instance, that the maximum rate of income tax at the time was 97.75%. So if you earned 100 rupees beyond the threshold at the maximum slab, 97 rupees and 75 cents out of that had to the government had to go to the government. You were left only with 2 rupees and 25 percent. This affected business and it affected morality. And so black money was generated at that time. One had to fight against these excesses of the legislature and of the executive. I remember first meeting Nishit at a conference in about 1881 or 82. He had just written a book on non-residents and it was very interesting. And these are the issues that we used to face that in India, capital was just not being generated because the tax rates were so high. Non-residents had to come in, but there was such a labyrinth of regulations that this had to be, one had to go around these, one had to circumvent them, and yet be in compliance with all of these. Thereafter, the Sunnishad Desai has started and heads a fantastic law firm. It is very heavy, as he said, into researching every aspect of the law and in the implementation. Is this truly cutting edge knowledge of the law. For instance, one of the other items, apart from whatever he mentioned, is that his firm has recently written a number of articles and papers on the law relating to drones. We may think of drones just as a toy that you can fly them around and maybe they'd be useful for delivery. But what is, what is the law relating to drones? What, are the, what, is, what, the law, what should the law be? to the implications of using drones, as he talked about artificial intelligence, as he talked about electric vehicles, so it will be for drones and for so many other things. So the law is always expanding. It has to keep up with humans, and humans are always changing. So the law has well. And the law does change every day. There are not truths, but there are notifications and judgments every day. And one has to work very hard to keep up with the law. It used to be said that a lawyer had to work like a horse and live like a hermit. Yes, you do have to work like a horse, but the change so much that you have to be aware of everything around you, so you can't just like a hermit. Nishit also mentioned about the, the role of experience in actual circumstances. Oliver Wendell Holmes, a judge of the US Supreme Court, said, life in the law has not been logical. 
it has been experience. And that is what one has to bring to one's to bear in all one's all one's practice, all the situation that one encounters, whether you are advising clients or whether you are arguing in court or you're writing a paper, you have to see what are the situations that human beings can think of, what can they contemplate, and how should the law react to these or how should the law provide for these actively. So with all this, there are many opportunities in the law to be a counsel and to argue cases. These are the persons whose names you read in the newspapers every day they appeared before the Supreme Court or before the High Court. But as Nishit said, it is not just the the words that you say in court, it is a basis of these, the foundation of all that is a preparation to prepare cases. As he said, a counsel is as brief. So the material that is given to him, what goes into the preparation is very important. The opinions that you give to your clients, which will direct them into, in a particular manner, to go ahead with the project, not to go ahead with it, to take a risk, not to take that risk, and how to plan for the future after study of all the issues. These are some possibilities. Then one may join a company and or one may work towards being a judge or being a professor of the law. And there are so many more, so many more kinds of activities that one can do as a lawyer. One of the things that students ask is, can the income be good? Yes, the income can be very good. It can also be difficult because especially in the first few years, it takes a long time to build up your knowledge and your reputation. But after that, the income can be good. The highest pay lawyers earn a great deal of money. But not everyone, of course, can make that kind of money. You are aware of the three-year course and the five-year courses, and you can choose what suits you. Internship is also extremely important nowadays, and that can give an exposure to different branches of the law while you're a student. Nishit again talked about this. He said that you can, should not function as if you're in a silo. And I also tell students who come and intern with me, this is the time of your life when you can go and learn many different branches of the law. You can be with a civil lawyer, a criminal lawyer, a constitutional lawyer, a corporate lawyer, a tax lawyer, and understand all these different branches. Then see what suits you best, do that. But you must, even though you're a specialist at one thing, you must have a background of, you must have a general knowledge of many different laws. It is like a stool with multiple legs. It becomes much more stable and your focus can be much greater with a breadth of knowledge. So you have to have breadth of knowledge, you have to have depth of knowledge, and you also have to have a very focused ability to go to the heights. Also, while you are in law college, you must participate in moot courts and you must participate in essay competitions and write. Many years ago, Lord Denning, a famous British judge had come to Bombay and I heard him speak at the Convocation Hall. He spoke very well. And one thing that he said was that everyone, not just a lawyer, everyone must spend some time every day reading. You may read about your own subject. If you're a lawyer, you read about the law, you read judgments, but you must read fiction, you must read the newspapers, you devour everything that you can, because that's how your knowledge, that's how your experience go, grows, not through merely experiencing something firsthand, but also through other people's minds and through other people's eyes. And to, to this I add that you must not only read, but you must write and you must speak, not only in the law, but in any field of activity. Nishit also talked about being able to participate in public life through the law. That is what happened during the independence, before, the, before independence. There were so many lawyers in the freedom movement because they were able to express themselves freely and fearlessly, and therefore they tended to become the leaders. As it has happened, very few of the prime ministers of India since 1947 have been loyal. Jawaharlal Nehru was, but many of the others have not. Maybe we can attribute some of the problems of our country to the fact that we have not had lawyers in the foreground. So this is something that you must bear in mind that this is a possible field of activity if you're a lawyer. I remember also during the emergency at that time, and a group of lawyers had filed, uh, wanted to have a public meeting. They knew that the government would not allow it because of the censorship that there was these. 
but about 500 people made an application to the uh, commissioner of police saying that they want to have a public meeting in order to criticize the emergency. They said the police had to refuse. So they filed a petition in the high court. And I was in college then, as I said, I went into the courtroom to hear the arguments. And I heard many of the best lawyers of that time. In that one courtroom, there were it was jam-packed. I was standing on a window on a windowsill. And there were about 15 of us standing on that windowsill. It was so crowded. But it was really fascinating. And that's when you saw the law truly in action to protect and defend our fundamental rights. And I remember Mr. Ram Jetmalani's last words. He said that the silence which the commission police is trying to give to us is the silence of the graveyard. This is all the silence and the peace that you will get if you do not allow such meetings to be held. Then, of course. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right. I can see a few students have raised that. If you can also mention the stream on which the student is. Uh, yes. Fatima's on mute. Fatima. Uh, another professional course, you do not get any exemption. The Bar Council requires certain subjects to be studied and you have to do your exams and all of those. So even if you've studied, done your LLM, uh, your master's and something else, you will not, not get an exemption in your LLB. Okay. Yes, so internship is, you know, I would think it to, not to generally take up paralegalship because it should not take away your time from your course studies. I think when you're studying, most important thing is to read books and books and books. I think textbooks particularly don't take. Of course, we all took shortcut, Jabbala series and stuff like that. But I think... to go through the textbooks, you know. And um, if you get into paralegal ship or otherwise, you know, what happens is you learn hands-on some of the basic things, but your thought process will not go. It is very important to, un to do critical thinking time when you're studying, uh, read, uh, The status quo and stuff like that, but I would uh, so internship as uh, Anil Pai mentioned is very important so that you got a little feel of the whole thing, but doesn't mean that you spend all your time uh, in internship, so to say, like paralegal kind of thing. I would um, and read a lot many other things. For, uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> two subjects I would recommend all uh, law schools to invite. One would be philosophy, another is psychology. Because philosophy is very important. <coughs> Hi. Good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Yasira and I've... When the research comes at a later stage, when you will work on different projects, when you do moot courts, then you will research, which will be to enable you to be able to present your arguments better. And there will be legal essays. Then there will be different kinds of opportunities, for instance, tutoring, etc., where we plan to have a, a kind of system where there'll be smaller groups of students and they can take the lead amongst themselves to have internal discussions. And for all of those, research is important. Can I add here? <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> I missed the name. Is... Yashira, ma'am. Yashira. Yashira. Uh, so as you mentioned about which areas, which domains, so as Sir mentioned, uh, there will be different from semester one, uh, if you are doing, B, you are you are 12 standard or you are graduate, I missed out that, you've done BMS, right? Or you have, a, again, clinical uh, course where professional ethics and uh, professional accounting system is there. So is as for the interest you have in particular area, uh, so that will be the opportunity given to you to choose that. So I believe research is an opportunity which you pick yourself based on the interest you have in special, specialized field. It's not about uh, the pre-decided uh, uh, work process that you need to pick up a particular, uh, uh, particular area and do the research. It's self-driven and you come forward and say that I would like to do research in this area. Whatever interests you, whether it's insurance law, property law, or any kind of law. Okay. 
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for this great knowledge. We uh, have our next student, Reeth from Bath, to ask a question. Reeth, are you there? Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, I completed BCom accounting and finance last year. Uh, my question is, if I want to pursue a law career in it's been done. Now, a lot of frauds happen uh, in financial services sector, or at least in the account sections, you know, and the manipulations happen. Now you need to understand there is no particular course I would recommend. There may be a lot of you know, small courses or some kind of uh, uh, specialized, uh, you know, courses and stuff like that, but nothing comes to my mind, which is, you know, specific to that. There are definitely in existence, but the way in which I would look at, and uh, we also have a separate team on uh, investigation and the forensic side, but what you really do is to apply law to a situation. So the role of a lawyer is to analyze, for example, accountants, if they have found something, then whether there has been a, a legal violation of some law or something that has legal implication. So from a lawyer's perspective, investigation is to read between the lines as to what the accounting firms or other people uh, have investigated, you know, and uh, so if you have some understanding of accounting, I think lawyers can play a lot of role, but actually you are applying law more than accounting. You know, that is what I would look at. So, and then you find out how serious an offense is, whether somebody is really guilty or somebody is not guilty. And um, because today that this field has become very, very important. So there are agencies which do this investigation and stuff like that you know um uh, and uh, it might be a good idea to do some internship with those people basic understanding as to how the investigation happens you know but at the end of the day as a lawyer you apply law to a particular situation and if you find something wrong uh, what could be the consequences that is what something you need to understand in fact i remember uh there was a case going on. Now, this is where back in 1977, I was at the High Court when uh, Justice um, uh, S.K. Desai and uh, Chandurkar Bench was there. B.A. Palkiwala was arguing the case. And uh, what happened? Um, well, the case was going on. Um, and there was one of the, uh, those days, mills used to be there, you know, textile mills. And there was some also, you know, right going on. SK Desai interrupt and told Mr. Palkiwala that what you're telling, just wait, can you just study not only the accounts of this year, but also past three years? And I think it should be like this. Okay. And it was very interesting. Uh, after two or three days when met me for a judge, I wrote to come out and anticipate or predict or think that it looks pretty good on the books today. There is something wrong going somewhere else and we should investigate into it. So that you know, and uh, we all learn from those kind of experiences. So, you know, you apply logic to solve problem and and, you know, to prove somebody right or wrong and stuff like that. Can I add here, uh, I again, Ms. Okay. Yes. So, Reet, uh, I heard about forensics. Uh, is it like, is it right? Uh, did I hear right? You want yes. to know the program? So, uh, International Forensic Science uh, Institute uh, is uh, 
provides many certified programs and courses starting today maybe by first week of january and uh, uh, every year they have number of certified courses in forensics um, and if you as sir mentioned ishuji that once you understand the llb program you have a foundation set and if you heard him right uh, inverted t approach that uh, uh, after graduation you should first have the hold on the laws and then you get into a specialization you will be a better but nothing can stop you to do those programs which are government certified or even any institution certified so to, uh, about uh, forensics uh, criminology about uh, entomology all these programs their fingerprint examination and uh, fingerprint uh, print experts cyber forensic many programs are offered by uh, even uh, taken by the students uh, of sciences so that's how i know and that they uh, go for such programs whether as a lawyer or you uh, as a student you can or uh, any maybe from a management background or finance background you can uh, do these programs so please visit the website uh, of this is called international of uh, uh, this uh, uh, forensic science institute so if please, i may express my personal view uh uh i am lata ben i think that while you are studying law just focus on law okay do all these courses after you have finished your law and um in fact i myself uh, i have done that because I, while i was studying law i studied in depth theories of law lot of things because ultimately in investigation is the application of law absolutely so unless you have learned basics of law you know what you will apply will be perhaps misapplied it will be half baked knowledge so my strong recommendation first focus on the studies studies and studies okay read as much as you can argue in the your law school make sure that your thought process is clear and after finishing law maybe you should do some of these side courses because you will otherwise distract again i am not here to judge uh competency of the people but approach would be that have very good focus on what you are really trying to achieve and that is to become a good lawyer so you, your law has number of different in forensic also you have to apply a lot of criminal uh, law principles to other kind of accounting principles and all that so, but i would my recommendation generally is while you are studying law better focus on law thank you sir there is there is there is 10 different opinions but i am just telling you my personal view so read i, I would say that nishit sir's uh, greatest takeaway is inverted t approach where you understand the base of a pyramid or base of a t and then you go any vertical so yes, that is yes, the best approach yes ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you read thank you sir thank you ma'am we have next student shivam from bachelor of arts to ask the next question shivam Uh, Darshan, I'll just go to the next question. If uh, we can't hear Shivam, so to... we go to our next question. The student is Dhruvi from the Junior College. Dhruvi, can we have your question, please? I think. Krishna, ma'am, can we switch to the next student? Yes, sure, sir. Uh, so we next to um, Suraj. Suraj here. Krishna, ma'am, I think Alfia, Ayushi, Parth, these I'm are the ones who have raised their hands. We have Parth from BMS. Yes, ma'am. Part. Part, you may continue with the question. Yeah. Yes, uh, a very good evening, uh, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you all to make this informative session happen. And my question for today is: What are the variety of skills and attributes required to 
be a successful lawyer part as a that's a session by itself each of them very have, hard work uh, very hard work application in mind to brief it up yeah very hard work application in mind and trying to understand everyone around you the psychology of your client and of the judges and the other people you have to interact with but more than anything else hard work and if i may at anil bhai i think critical thinking language linguistic skills and uh, uh, your oratory your articulation you know uh, there are so many things to actually uh, okay. do, but at least this three additional things that come to my mind you know yes so everything you try to question don't think i have a gray hair and therefore my senior says something so you take it and you can change this situation every day because people agree with me all the time even young kids you know but um, so try to question and ask why for everything that you do and after having observed uh, mr nishit ji and uh, mr anil harish let me tell you part uh, uh, what i have learned uh, watching this uh, solvers uh, attention to detail is very important so whenever we have a program even a uh, invite a card or a letter or a paper has has needs that so i believe that is what and even research skills looking at nishit desai ji uh, preparation and uh, research research skills are very important and above all uh, if you ask me when i see uh, dm harish uh, uh, this and how the entire team works is also about understanding people and teamwork so if you are a person who uh, believes in teamwork i believe this is where nishit uh, uh, desai associates are there and even dm harish company because it has to be a company can be an individual who will succeed so keep observing lawyers you will learn uh, read about uh, read, read their books will acquire all the skills can i add one story okay when i started practice i was uh, originally interested in uh, what was then called labor law now it's called employment law and i tried to find a senior and i couldn't find okay over a period of time you know uh, started i said i i learned from eklavia okay and i said i can't find a senior then let me you know um go to high court and sit in the court room so from morning till evening i sat in the court and i used to make notes of all the cases coming up and looked at all the lawyers who are arguing different cases observed them and learn a little bit a sense worth so what happened over a period of like 6 month i was having the best case law kind of um dictionary because every case i made a note of the case small brief who argued and what was the outcome so those days for one case to be published in air or the journals took 6 months 8 sometimes longer period whereas i had ready made directory so all seniors started asking me oh, some days ago this case came you know uh, you know it, it happened like this what is the number of that case because they want to just go to that case you know so i was sitting there so i got some popularity because of my notes and i learned from all of them you know over a period of time so I, as i think anil mentioned look observe how people argue i found number of lawyers who were extremely good at uh, their oratory but they were so nice and they also enjoyed talking so even when they were winning case they argued more than what was necessary and they didn't know where to stop and lost cases so there are number of councils i know they lost a lot of cases just because they argued what was more than necessary you know so it one needs to know when to start and when to stop thank you so for sharing their real life experience with them thank you parth for asking the question we have uh, Alfia from Junior College to ask the next question. Um, sorry, but uh, I think for due to paucity of time, we don't get such an eminent panel. We'll just take the last two questions. 
so that we can wind up. Alfia, can we have your question? Alfia, you are on mute. Alfia, you may unmute yourself and ask the question. Alfia, you are... Darshna, I think we should move on to the next student. Yes, sir. Sure. The host is uh, not allowing uh, Alfia Zitin, so please unmute her. Ma'am, I have allowed her to, <laughs> yeah. Alfia, can you just uh, keep your question on the chat box if you're not able to speak up? Ma'am, it is done. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. My, good evening, sir. My name is Alfia Mansuri from FIBA from RD National Question. RD National College. My question is, if a, if a 12 student take a five-year law course, which other professional degree should I, I take up? Will this to enhance my career? You're pursuing FIBA, right? Oh. Is it? You have done 12 arts? Yes. So you uh, may take BA LLB uh, as a five years indicated program. But you're also open to BBA LLB because nothing stops you to take even BBA. You'll be eligible for that as well. Based on your interest in the uh, social sciences, whether you want to do English, political science, sociology, or you want to take management studies, which is part of BBA program. So principles of management, they're part of BBA Oh, uh, uh, yes, last, one. The last yes. one. So we have a name from Ayushi from the bath department. Uh, hello. Yes, I can. I have the yes. Yes, Ayushi. Uh, Hello everyone, this is Ayushi. I have completed BCom Accounting and Finance last year. Uh, this session was very informative. And my question is, uh, what added opportunities or specializations will be provided with my law career? Yes, so, uh... Ayushi, if you visit the website and the prospectors, uh, you will get to know each facets, whether it's environmental law or law of contract or constitutional law, law of crimes. Based on the specialization, which your question you're asking, you may take up summer internship or you make a research paper or you can participate in that particular law based on your interest. But the LLB program, which is offered by the Science University, DM High School of Law, prepares you uh, to, to as Mr. Mr. Desai said, that you your base has to be strong. So it exposes you to even media and law, banking law. After that, wherever you want to have expertise, you can choose and you can uh, do certificate courses, which will be again organized under the DM High School of Law. And, uh, and that every year, uh, apart from the simple summer internship that you are getting experts, or you're getting expertise, you also will be given opportunity to be part of different courses and then you can specialize. Like I'll that. just say one small thing here, uh, just for the guidance. Uh, my experience generally has been, and do not take it as a generalization, and there is a lot of students who come doing BCom, the linguistic skills are very poor. So if you have to find some time to read fictions or literature, I think it's time to do that at this point in time. Once you get into profession, it will not be. So my this is one weakness I have constantly uh, identified amongst people who do law after become, you know. I'm not saying that everyone is weak or otherwise, but I think they have paid less attention on uh, uh, literature. I think that is something I strongly recommend, you know. 
Thank you so much, everyone. And I have to do the unpleasant job of uh, ending this absolutely enlightening session. I have learned so much. It's been a real delight to have such an eminent panel beginning with our chief guest, Mr. Nishit Desai. Absolutely a luminary. And of course, it's always a pleasure and always a plethora of information with our uh, past president and trustee, Sri An. Vice Chancellor at Chesons University, Dr. Himlata Bangla, Dr. Siri Achra, Chandani, and the entire HSNC University team, especially Professor Bhan, who has helped us put this webinar together. So, just before we conclude, Team RD National College for a very, very bright future. And I'm sure Mumbai going from success to success and with a very, very Road ahead, a small little best wishes from our Thank you so much to each and every one of you. Our students. Uh, all of us can start exiting one by one. But truly an enlightening and informative evening. Thank you so much to the entire HSNC University team and our chief guest and keynote speaker. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, One last thing. Thank you. Uh, yeah. all the students, uh, I want to tell all the students, those who couldn't put their questions or they were hesitating to put questions uh, or they were couldn't put on the chat box or they couldn't answer, please mail us at Ask me anything at the rate it is sensu.edu.in. I again repeat, you can ask us anything. So the mail says, uh, address says, ask me anything at the rate it is sensu.edu, that is education.edu.in. So if you visit the website, we'll wait for the questions and it shall get back to you. The entire team of DMI School of Law will try to answer each and every query. And if you want to visit personally, please come to uh, our, uh, our place, our early building, DM Harish building, and we will be there to address all your queries. Looking forward to having you with you. us. Thank you for keeping you. Mr. DM Harish's memory alive. It's so nice to recall. And I also remember looking at him with a lot of you know aspiration and I would say inspiration more when we grew up. Thank you. Thank you, Nishit. Thank you, Neha. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.